New York kid, like I'd practice my signature for when I'd be a professional football player. <laughs>side effects of the 520 rule is that you have so much going on so you have to be a student of your calendar you should read the book checklist manifesto understand how to use checklists but one of the things is when you get all of that done like I did last week in New York things get kind of crazy and uh, I had one of my employees forget the camera and the uber and the video and so uh, I didn't want to waste all that great content the other side that I want to talk about is that it's really funny when people make mistakes, human mistakes, it's a, they, they think I'm going to get mad as, as a leader, as CEO. And that's rarely even frustrating to me because I know people are human. They're effic not efficient, not effective and statistically unsuccessful. Where you make the mistake is when you make those mistakes, when you go below the line into blame, shame and justification, you don't take accountability, you're not grateful especially not empathetic or forgiving. You need to institute all of those great rules and, and principles when we do make mistakes. It's not the mistake itself, it's what we do afterwards that makes the difference. Utilize the 520 rule, utilize the checklist manifesto and be a student of your calendar and enjoy the vlog. We're at the New York Small Business Expo at the Jacobs Javits Center and uh, taking some phone calls. But I like to hold court when I'm in the city, as you know, we'll probably Besides have two different speeches today, take on between 15 and then 17 meetings until we go to the airport. So uh, holding court's the most efficient way to do that. Those people that are most interested in meeting with us have a central location. Not only, as you can see, do they want to meet with me, but all of these different meetings now coordinate as a business development meeting. And there's three or four different introductions. Uh, my typical 20 minute meetings are over. I've had three or four of them already but they're continuing on and having their own meeting without me, which is part of the value of what you can bring by holding court. Yep. No Custom way. Tops cards. No way. Yeah. Dude. Would have been cool to give you at the office, but it's still... That is not many people have their own Tops cards like that, so I had them custom made. Look at that thing. Pretty cool. That's a, that was the perfect strike knuckleball. Oh, the picture's Me and made, Wakefield. Like, you, you, when they were, they were sending me images, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I, I wasn't surprised you threw out a first pitch, but the image is amazing, you know? <laughs> so these are all yours, of course. It's no way. For 49, I took one. So, ah. <laughs> I'll make it worth something someday. Oh, Mark yeah, yeah. my words, I'm gonna make this card worth something. Yeah. Dude, thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. That may be one of the best gifts I've ever gotten. Oh, wow. How cool is that? That's my dream. I used to practice. You know, it's funny because having a book, I get to sign stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you were a kid, like, I'd practice my signature <laughs> oh, I, I for when I'd be a professional <laughs> football player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? So, we're, so we're, literally, where do you sign your cards? I mean, this is the spot right here. Plus you right across there? So it makes yeah. Nice clear. That's awesome. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. First baseball card I've ever signed. Pretty neat. Best gift ever. Chris, super exec from Tops. They finally signed a real knuckleballer. Look out, Wakefield. I'm taking the Clemente Award from you next. We just swapped our own autographed Topps card. It's pretty surreal. One pitch, one strike. How many pitchers can say that off of the mound at Angel Stadium? I can. Sorry. Hey, buddy. I got to go speak. I'm going like, to go watch. Are you going to go watch? I'll see you right after. And I'm doing a thing for you guys, I think, right after that. How are you? I'm great. How you are have you? fun of the game? Oh, yeah. There's another round of sessions that start at 2.30, but okay. this is like a big draw, so okay. don't worry about it. Cool. I know this is a small business expo and it seems odd to talk about gratitude, but this is the easiest way to change your life. I tell people if you can simply say thank you before you go to bed and thank you when you wake up, it will change your life. I challenge people, I built an app, it's free. I challenge you to say thank you for 30 straight days. 30 straight days, who here thinks they can say thank you for 30 straight days? Yeah, you would think so. <laughs> The funniest thing is I speak in front of thousands of people and they're, don't worry, it's a sign. It happens to me all the time. God, let it go away. Um, it's not an accident. Um, yes, I'm that good. And for my next trick. Thank you. First time for everything, right? Not bad? You can manifest anything you desire. The power of vibration. Now if I could just remember what I was saying, we'd all be cool. No more things. 
So gratitude, I speak in front of thousands of people and hundreds of birds, and <laughs> the saddest thing for me is, you know, I have studied my entire life energy, especially in the last 10 years, and I give people the biggest gift I can, which, can, which is the perspective of gratitude. By tonight, half of you won't say thank you. By tomorrow morning, another half of you won't say thank you. And by the next three days, almost all of us will stop saying thank you. That's how far in our own way we are. For young people, teach them to get the skills to practice, be patient, enjoy them, ask for help, get mentors' knowledge, and then finally maintain inspiration or desire. I choose my mentors by people who have the situation or knowledge or experience that I want. It's the best piece of advice for a younger person as a CEO. Very simple. For a small business, just focus on staying in business. Like, the best piece of advice that I got was stop worrying about every single thing. The first thing I do even today is I guarantee I'm in business tomorrow because I know businesses evolve. I don't know how quickly it'll take to evolve to what I want it to be, but I know that if I stay in business, it'll get there. Hi, how are you? Good Mike, to see you again. All the pleasure yeah. Uh, really, really related to everything you said. Phenomenal, Thank you. inspirational. I'm an attorney. I've opened a number of companies. I've transitioned into meditation, public speaking, and things. So I really, really awesome. I want to read a lot of what you've done. Reach out to me. I will. Do you, I'm sorry. Sorry. Absolutely. Can I have a quick picture? Yeah, of course. Thank Two recovering so lawyers. Yeah, absolutely. Give me a call. I will. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Hey, David. Say hello. Yeah, great good to see you. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, oh, thank you. Oh, really? Oh, we're doing another audition on Thursday, but we're going to do another one in Arizona in February, too. Uh, one question. So, I work with people who are addicted to success, like high achievers. Mm -hmm. And what would you recommend to somebody who's like, you know, like super stressed out, burned out, yeah. to gain more fulfillment, emotional well being? So, one, that detachment idea, but yeah. also getting out of their own way. So, yeah. when you teach them the needs of the ego, a lot of people that are overachievers have the need to be right, yeah. the need to be separate, superior, inferior, both. Yeah. They also have a need to be offended. So I would shift what you're teaching into more ego-driven things yeah, yeah. because they're projecting an insecurity yeah. when they're out of balance uh, because they're usually hyper-intelligent, they usually have some other vibrational things going on that they feel like they are not enough is another big issue yeah. with overachievers. So they're trying to prove something that doesn't exist. So a lot of times I'll tell people early when I business coach them, yeah. hey, you're enough. Every time that you're thinking this way, just tell yourself, I'm enough. And then things happen quickly, things are easier, yeah. and you, if, you're, if you're trying to prove yourself to someone or something, you'll never do it. Yeah. In fact, I tell people even in sales, why are you so worried about this person that doesn't like you or doesn't agree with you? Yeah. Do you know, percentage-wise, I'm a pretty, uh, pretty uh, influential and in, in, you know I, I can convince people you know so easily and I go it would take me so much energy and time to convince this person to agree with me it's not, worth it. not worth it I'll go attract people that get it and I'll, and I'll enhance them but we waste so much energy our ego tells us oh I need them to like me right oh yeah. and you no you know I'd rather people hate me for who I am than love me for who I'm not the average millionaire in America went bankrupt two times which not only means they had no money twice, <laughs> but it means they fail all the time. A true entrepreneur never fails, they just keep going on. In fact, most athletes, their biggest problem with being entrepreneurs is they don't know when to walk away. Why? Because they're taught, well, you know, it's fourth down, you know, game's not over till it's over. Let me just tell you, being an entrepreneur, game is over when you can't figure out a direct path to revenue. Cut your losses and find a different innovation to find a path to revenue. To raise it. Sometimes you just have a great idea, but there's competition. There's independent and dependent variables that make it impossible to do that. There's the universe, right? I told everyone in the last session, you make 100% of your, your decisions and you only know 10% of the facts, the truth. The rest is perception. One of the great ways as an innovator and an entrepreneur to be more successful is to change your perspective with gratitude, empathy, accountability, and effective communication and know that although I only know 10%, the universe is working on my side. So when you don't get the deal or the thing doesn't work or whatever other thing seems like a shortage, failure, void, obstacle, attack, you say thank you. I'm a time freak. 
I believe to be productive. There's all these efficiencies, effectiveness, and statistical success of time. I wrote in my book originally that there's 64 hours of production you can have in a day. Most people work eight hours. If I can teach you to be twice as efficient, you have 16 hours of, of productivity. If I can teach you to be twice as effective, you now have 32 hours of productivity. If I can teach you to be twice as statistically successful, you now have 64 hours of productivity. I now in a day, an eight hour day, am getting eight times the amount of productivity when they list out all those awards and businesses I own and TV shows and everything, I'm just beating you with time. I also fail eight times as much. That would have to be, oh, see, Warren Moon, should we put him on here? Hey, Warren. How you doing? I'm giving a speech in front of hundreds of people. You're, you're on my stage. Wanna say hi? Hello, yeah, right now, say hi. And, and I was talking about you. Oh, say it, oh, hold on, say it one more time. And I hope you're enjoying uh, the message that he's gonna leave you with, and I'm sorry I can't be there with you today, but you're in good hands, so uh, have a great afternoon. Uh, I initially, three mentors that helped me, and I asked them if they would help me build a board of advisors. The board of advisors would be, each person would be responsible for number one, one action item. So I particularly pick out the advisor, if this guy was the managing director of IDG Ventures, well, I'd ask him to help me raise money. And this person made no you know, screen dis distribution, and that was part of my product. I'd say, hey, can, can you, and so, second step is get those three people that you ask for help, and then they actually will spread a board of advisors with a vested interest. I don't count on other people money. I have no judgments or conditions I put on anything. Yeah, I, I simply, don't. like whatever is happening, I really just like make it my effort to enjoy it. Later, brother. Bye. Dude, you got your on the manifestations today, bro. Oh, yeah, oh, like that? Shit. That having, that, having that on, uh, having that on TV.